Now let's start creating some shapes that we can use for our beams and columns. Here on the left we can see a list of some possible default shapes. We can start creating a simple rectangular shapes. So we just need to insert a new element and then from the properties box we can also change the dimension. For example by using 35 centimeters for the base and 65 for the height. But maybe I need something more complex like for example an H section. So let's insert this new element and here on the workspace we can already see all the measurements while from the properties panel we can change the dimension. For example we can change the thickness of the core from 20 to 25 centimeters. We can also change the length from 40 centimeters to 50. But of course we can proceed to modify all the other parts of our section. On the left column we can also see if a folder already contains some element. In this case it will become from orange to light blue. As seen before we can also create new customized folder which can contain elements that are different from the default on the list. So let's insert a generic element and then by clicking the edit button we can access the editor of the shapes. In this editor we have all the functions that allow us to modify the shapes and geometry of this object. So we can add new nodes and change their position and we can also convert a segment into an arc. Then we can insert an aperture in the shapes and so I can insert new nodes and change the segment into an arc. We can apply the same procedure to the steel profile and so from the left list we can choose a default section and then we can add a new element. Again from the properties panel we can change the dimension or like in this case we can change the distance between the two profiles of this element. The next folder in our list contains the doors object so let's see how to create a new door. On the left panel we need to create a new folder. Then right click and append a new element. From this menu we need to choose a typology of the door. We can choose among rectangular, rectangular plus arc or keystone or totally customized elements. But let's start by inserting a simple rectangular door. From the right panel we can define the dimension of the door, for example in this case a width of 1 meter and 80 centimeter. Here in the workspace we can see the result of our modification. From the right bottom panel we can select the element of the door. For example we can select the frame and start to edit its properties. By applying this function we can select the side of the frame we want to visualize. For the internal panel instead we want to delete the frame but also we want to divide it in three different panels. And then each of these panels can be modified. For example for the dimension of the first panel I need only 20% of the entire width of the door. Of course I can change the properties of the frame of this panel. For example, for this I want to delete the bottom segment of the frame. Again I can divide this in more sections, but this time I want a horizontal separation. And also for these new panels, I can delete some part of the frames. Of course I can modify the dimension of these two panels, and even the materials. For example, in this case, I don't need a glass anymore. And instead I want a panel made of wood, and with a bevel as well. And now let's edit the remaining panels. We can start to edit the dimensions, that should be 40% now. From this menu we can select the opening typology, for example hinged, sliding, folding and so on. We can change the green grip position to modify the opening side of the panel. For these panels as well I can change the frame properties, for example deleting the bottom side and dividing it in two separate horizontal panels. For each of this panel I need only the bottom side frames. And also here I want to add a bevel and the panel should be made of wood. And of course this door will need an handle to be opened. And when we achieve the desired result we can confirm by clicking the green button. Now let's analyze the Windows object. So select the relative folder from the menu, then insert a new folder in the left panel and by selecting append new element we can see this new menu. Again we can select among different shapes and for this example we will use a rectangular simple window. 
from the right panel, we start to define the dimension which can be, for example, 1 meter and 80 centimeters and 2 meter for the 8. For this window, I need an horizontal fixed panel, which dimension should be 20% of the 8. And for both these two panels, I want to add two vertical separators, which will divide my element in three different panels of the same width. Then let's select this horizontal separator and add a new profile. Now for the left and right panels, I want a width of 25% of the entire width of the window. Now let's select the vertical separators, and also here we will add a profile. I want to select all this panel because I need to change the frame properties. For example, I want a bevel in a width of 10mm. Now let's change the typology of the main panel. And for this example, I need, I need an hingle panel with the opening on the right side. And also here I want to add a bevel and change the dimension of the frame. Eventually, even for this panel, I need to add an handle. Now, let's suppose we want a different type of window, as for example, a shape with dark. Now, in the properties panel, we will have a new dimension for the arc, so we can have a width of 1 meter and 60 centimeters, a total height of 2 meters, and in this case, if we want a full arc, we need to insert an 8 of 80 centimeters. Now if we want further customization, we can select this panel and divide it in two horizontal elements. Again, we can assign a dimension in percentage, for example, 30% for this panel, and we can add a profile to the separator. Then we can define the opening direction of the small panel, for example, by moving the green grip on the bottom side, and we can also add a very small frame to this panel. Now let's analyze the main panel. Also here, I want a vertical division in order to have twinged panels. So let's assign the correct typology and define the opening angles. Again, for each of this panel, we can change the properties of the frames. And eventually we can have a double profile. That allow us to separate the profile in this way, and so we can make different customization for each part. For example, we can assign a white color for one side and a wooden material for the other side. We can create a totally different shape of window by inserting a new element and selecting the customized option in this menu. In this case, we will have the editor function on the toolbar. As seen before, we can customize the perimeter by messing around with the vertex and eventually add new nodes. So let's confirm and come back to the previous window, in which we can modify each element with the same procedures we already applied to the previous window. For example, we can add a vertical separation and change the dimension of the panels. Again, we can add a profile to this separator and eventually change the panel typology. The next object in our list is the sunscreen. As seen before, we just have to create a new folder and insert the object inside. And here, some options available from the properties panel. For example, with this function, we can manage the repetition of panels both horizontally and vertically. Again, we will have the dimension of the frame and also the option that allows us to delete some sides of the frame. Of course, we will have all the options related to the main panel. So, for example, we can change the width of the blades, but we can also modify the maximum and minimum thickness of the blade elements. For example, in this case, I will have a 200 mm of width, then 30 mm for the maximum thickness, and 5 mm for the minimum. We can edit the separation between blades. So, for example, when the blades are fully closed, I will have a 10 mm distance in between. And of course, we can also change the opening angles of the blades, like for example 45 degrees in this case. And so we can create a totally customized sunscreen. And now let's have a look at another useful object. As seen for the doors and windows object, also for the panel, in this menu we can check some different options, like for example rectangular, circular, oval and so on. And for this object, we will have exactly the same options that we already learned from the doors panels. So let's skip this object in order to see how to customize the railing element. So let's insert our first object. 
First of all, we can see here some level, which will define the elevation of, of each single object in our railing. Then we have the runner, that we will use to make any horizontal element of our railing. Then we have the poles, that can be an initial pole, an intermediate, or also an ending pole. And eventually we have the main panel, that represent our balustrade. When we change the level value, for example from 1 meter to 2 meters, we can see all the elements connected to this level that will adapt the elevation in order to reach 2 meters. But we can insert more levels by clicking on this button and then clicking on the workspace. And then we can modify the elevation of the levels by changing its value from the properties panel. For example, I can change the runner level by clicking in this menu, so I can assign this runner to the new level. And now let's see how to modify the balustrade, and to do so we need to enter on the editor mode. Now let's say we want to insert a spear point over the pole, so we need to open this menu and select the panel object, then click on this node and click again to change the direction. Now I need to change the shape of this object, so select it, and from the beam object library I will select an object with the proper shapes. From this editor I can also change the section of the pole, by clicking on this button. Now close the editor and check the result in the previous window. Now that we changed the position of the runner, we probably want to modify also the shape of the section. So click on this button and select the rectangular shape. And now from here I can also change the dimension, for example 40 by 20 mm. Now let's select the balustrade and check its properties from the right panel. Starting from the offset, we will have the distance between the panel and the upper and lower levels. Here we have an horizontal offset, so for example by selecting 2 cm, all the poles will move horizontally of the same value. Then we have the space between each pole, for example if I write here 200 mm, this will be our result. We can also apply the same procedures to the initial pole. So again open the editor, select a panel object and click over the nodes the first time to insert the object and the second time to change the direction. From the right panel I can change the section of the pole, and for the panel I will select the same object from the beam object library. Coming back to the previous window, we can also change the elevation of this level, and then we can add an offset to the panel in order to have all the poles 5 cm lower of this runner. In the last example of this lesson, we will see how to generate a customized profile. Again, add a new folder and insert a new customized profile. To modify the section, we need to open the editor of the profiles. In this case, we will use a DXFDWG as reference for our drawing. So we will open this file, and then of course we need to assign a scaling factor, which in this case is 1. So for example, let's suppose we want to create a corrugated roof panel for our profile. Let's delete this perimeter, and start drawing our new shape. So select the polyline function and insert the first node here. For now, this is just a polyline without any thickness. So what we need to do is click here in order to assign a thickness, which in this case will be 0.8 mm. So let's click in this button to confirm, and coming back in the previous windows we can see the result of our drawing.